You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. I'm in my car in the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the box. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the box. YouTube, I'm back with another video. It's your boy 728 Autos. And yes, I can't quit this Corvette thing, man. I'm back again with another Corvette video. I know, I know, I know. Since when have I cared about Corvettes? Well, to be truthful, I've always kind of liked them. But now I really like this one. C8 Corvette. It looks good. Like I said, I have a couple issues with it. I went over that in my last video, but this isn't about that. This is about the future of the Corvette brand, the future of the car itself, and maybe even the future of hypercars, supercars, sports cars in general, you know, as the landscape keeps evolving and changing. There's a couple things I noticed here. So stop this video right here. So Obviously, we now have shifted to the mid-engine architecture. And a couple of things that they mentioned that they kind of dropped hints at what could possibly be the future of the Corvette itself. So we all know back here, we got the new V8, right? But when you look at the architecture of the car itself, you notice that they have increased stiffness right around the front axle here or you can consider this a front axle and that's what i'm going to get to here in a moment it opens some possibilities for a couple things but the other thing that also makes this a maybe a point that i might be looking a little bit deeper than i should be here but this car will also come as a right hand drive so that means that as it sits right now they have designed this to be very configurable up front and so you notice right now we've got the left-hand drive steering wheel, but there has been confirmed that it will be right-hand drive as well. So you notice we advance forward in the video, we look at the structure of the car. So the engine is going to sit back here, obviously. Then they have the dual clutch transmission. Then we have the rear axle. There's conspicuously a huge gap, uh, a big missing area here in the front that could be filled possibly with an electric motor or even a front diff. Now I know the front diff is probably a little bit far-fetched because of the way the new motor sits so low down into the chassis with that uh, front uh, lubrication system. They have a dry sump system. So the oil, um, I guess you want to call it an oil container, but not really, <laughs> but the reservoir there we go boy digging in for these words uh sits right here between this bulkhead and the engine compartment so i don't think that there would be a drive shaft capable of going in between here even though chevrolet is still using that backbone architecture so there's a big tunnel here still from i guess you could say it's a carryover from the current vet because they've used that uh, tunnel since I think like 97 or something like that so it's been a very long time but that tunnel now on the mid-engine Corvette it's gonna be open here and it could do a all-wheel drive Corvette if they wanted to but with the development of the new um, dual clutch transmission they have I'm pretty sure they're not gonna spend any money on changing all that up and doing a drive shaft in between here so the other option that I'm thinking they might do is in this spot right here up front is to do the Tesla style of having a small electric motor up here. Uh, Acura is already doing a system like this. They have a um, engine in the back with a uh, electric motor sandwiched between the transmission and the engine. And then they have two electric motors up front. So Corvette could potentially uh, 
uh, debut in a few years with a gas and an electric motor up front. So you look, there's a lot of space here for shenanigans. Now the suspension geometry and all that stuff might be a little bit uh, constraining, at, but from what they've shown so far, there's a big gap. Of course, you're gonna have your front, your front and your back trunk but right up in here, there's room for an axle if they wanted to do it. I think somewhere in this video, uh, they're gonna show that here. Yeah, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about here is, he says that the platform also has a new electric architecture, so a new digital vehicle platform. So he says that, you know, very confident that it's faster. Uh, look, look at all this stuff here they got set up, I mean, could they potentially unveil a Corvette that has an electric motor in the front and a gas motor in the back? I mean, they're kind of laying it out right there. I mean, in so many words, the platform is capable of it from what it looks like. And it looks like this new electrical uh, architecture is capable as well. So, I mean, put two and two together, y'all, you know what I'm saying? So let's look. So that's what I was saying earlier. The DCT sits in the back and there doesn't really look like there's any way for a, um, you know, front drive shaft to go in between where the engine sits and where everything is right now. There's no way for a dry shaft to come off the front here. I know Ferrari had a system where they had a uh, all wheel. Well, I wouldn't really call it all wheel drive. It only, it was very limited because it wasn't connected to the rear transmission, but it had a front uh, linkage that was connected to the front of the motor uh, to assist in like launching and stuff like that. But if you look, you know, outside of, you know, this uh, having the steering column here mounted, you could still easily place a front axle uh, in between there. Now, the only thing that I think might stop that is the way that the suspension is currently set up. It looks like this front uh, damper and spring combination is going to be kind of right in line with where you would put a drive shaft. So I don't know. They could change that up for a future model. We'll see, you know, possibly have an all wheel drive Corvette and it all already does zero to 60 under three seconds for the Z51 package. Can you imagine how fast the acceleration would be if they included a front motor, electric motor? It wouldn't even have to be that big. It, would, it can be a very small unit, very small battery pack somewhere uh, in the middle of the car. Or like I said, that's, that tunnel could be used to put batteries in there for the electric motors up front. Y'all put two, two and two together now. I'm talking some, talking some knowledge to you guys, some straight up Area 51 knowledge, y'all. Y'all got to be listening to me here. But I mean, this is just speculation at this point. It could be very possible. It could not be very possible. But I think that it's there if they want to do it. If they want to pursue it in the future, they look like they've built themselves a platform that will allow more flexibility than the front engine platform of the C7 could have ever offered. So let me know what you guys think. Am I just kind of maybe a little far fetched here? Maybe I have my. You know, wild conspiracy hat on. I don't know, but I think I see something that might be possible in the future. So let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you guys in another video. As always, hit the subscribe button for me and the like button. I'll catch you next video. Peace. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, I get the bus. Subscribe.